Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's Brianna Ray from BriIY here to bring you more baby content. But I think this might be pretty practical. Several years ago, I think at this point, it must have been two, I tried out this super awesome knitting machine. Uh, and to be fair, I think it's off-brand. I think it says Centro on it, but I got it for way less off of eBay. Maybe it's used, I wasn't sure. Uh, but I did get this knitting machine off of eBay for, I think, $25. And normally they go for about $40, so this actually ended up being a super cool deal. I kind of had this idea to do a bear. I mentioned it then, and I think there was a little bit of skepticism on how that might work in the comments, but I think I've come to the appropriate conclusion, and I actually think I got a request recently to try to hand knit a bear. Now, I don't knit, I actually crochet, uh, and I thought it would be a great time to try it out with this really soft, like, chenille fa uh, fabric, yarn-ish thing that I found at Dollar Tree, actually. So I picked up a ton of these, and I thought, man, this would be super perfect to make a nice baby teddy for my upcoming niece. This, I think, would be a great way to create a really neat, professional-looking teddy without having to spend tons and tons of time. So with all that said, let's get started. Like I said, I got these from the Dollar Tree. I have quite a few of them, uh, all the same, all white. Um, and I also got a little ribbon. So if this works out the way that I'm expecting it to, this is a $4 teddy and hopefully done in less than an hour. So let's see if I can make this work. Now, nev I never really go for this uh, loose thread up here. I always try to go inside and pull from the center because generally speaking, uh, it comes out a lot nicer because it's not tied around anything. Uh, there it is. So I should be able to drop this like center bit in here basically is how it works. And you always start with the black needle up on this side. And basically to get things started, uh, they always recommend having something to kind of weigh it down in the middle. So I might, you know, drop that guy on there. Uh, I've never had a problem with it otherwise, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna start turning the knitting machine all the way around and go back and forth. And now all you'll have to do is pull it right through this section here. And you're also gonna wanna make sure that you have it on the tube setting. And it does kind of make that clicking noise that always makes me anxious, but it always seems to work out okay. All right, I just made it through that first run, and honestly, I think this is gonna be a pretty good length, especially once I stretch it. Uh, all you gotta do once you get to the end is send it around a couple times. Now, don't go stretching anything yet. This looks super thin, I know, but that's just because we're gonna need to go through and do our last little round. So I'm just gonna get a decent length of this and cut it off. Snip. And now I'm going to get a yarn needle, pop this in here, and I'm going to stitch all the way around and tie it tight, kind of like the top of a hat. All right, got my hand on a needle, just a little plastic one will do. And we're gonna go from the side, and I'm just gonna go in and out of all of these final rows of stitches. Right, once you've got everything tightened up, kind of almost like a poof ball on top, I'm going to kind of wrap it around to really solidify it nice and tight, slip it right back in here, and I'm going to kind of knot it off so that it doesn't come apart. Now you're thinking, geez, this is really ugly. I get it, it definitely is. But what we're actually gonna do with this is flip it inside out so that this becomes the head of our teddy bear. I'm gonna You can see it actually stretches out pretty gosh darn nice. And just like I've done in the past, you can kind of see how this rounded shape is gonna turn into the bear's body. Uh, we're gonna keep this nice and round. We're gonna tie it off here to create the neck. And then the bottom portion is going to be the actual body. Uh, the major things here, I think the difficult part more so, is going to be uh, creating the limbs. All right, I've got this really thin piece here. 
but like we did earlier we can always give it a nice stretch and i was thinking master plan here to make uh creating the limbs really easy and with all this kind of like extra we have here i might go around and just stitch up the sides like this so that it kind of forms that shape there and then stitch around one side and cut off the end to make super easy limbs i'm just kind of picking an arbitrary point on the ends here. So I'm just gonna pull in that one here and back up, down and up, down. So then I'm just gonna kinda come around here. I'm just gonna make a rounded edge look so i can kind of feel in here where i made that stitch just gonna cut around the outside and all i have to do now is flip them inside out ah big hole i guess stretched them a little too much nothing another quick stitch can't fix let's flip it around there we go. That's what I wanted. And I'll give it a nice stretch. Pretty good, actually. Not so bad. And then, once I have everything together, I would be able to attach it right here. I'm gonna follow the same process until I have all of my little arms and legs done. And basically, I do the same thing for the ears, except I just make it about this long. So honestly, I think this one's gonna become an ear, because it's a little bit on the short side. Um, and I'm going to do the same to my other now five pieces, short ones for the ears and long ones for the legs. I changed my approach just a little bit. I whip stitched all the way up the edge. That is the going around and around and around. And I did that all the way down all of these bits and pieces. I have these kind of marks that I was using to indicate where I'm going to cut. All I'm doing now is I'm going in and I whip stitched around the top. And that is when I'm going to go in on my marks and cut that way when I flip this inside out it's gonna be a little messy on the ends but that's okay because those are the ones that are gonna be kind of tied up anyway and when I push it back out on the other side uh, you can see that it's mostly clean uh, and it only needs a couple of uh, extra fixes I think overall everything's looking pretty good um, I've got the short ones for the ears to go up there and then the legs so I think I've got just about everything that I need now it's only a matter of stuffing everything All right, I think I've got the shape pretty well done. You can see I've kind of added this nose to give it that three-dimensional shape here, which means that his neck, and I'm not intentionally trying to strangle this bear, I assure you, but his neck's gonna have to go about here. I think I'm gonna attach the bottom together first using that same kind of string through and pull method. And that should give us the basic shape of the bear for us to attach all of the appendages nice and easy. Just a quick update as we go. I did close the bottom portions of the ears uh, before sewing them on just to make sure that they kind of had that flatter texture even though they were still kind of fluffed um, and I think that was the right way to go. However, for the legs, I am leaving the bottoms open. Now, obviously this means they're kind of messy. So what I've been doing is I've been kind of folding the ugly edges inside and what I do is I will place it where I want it on the body. I stick into the body of the bear first and then I come up from the bottom and I go about two or three rows in of the stitches and pull to tighten and you can see it's locked in pretty well. And you have a fully attached limb. There we go. All right, and here we have it, our bare base. We are moving into the finishing touches. So there's a couple things to do here. I like to add faces and I like to add bows. 
right. Got the bow about the way I want it to look. Now I like to keep the tails as well. So what I do for those is I kind of fold it down the center, pick about the length I want, and then I cut on a diagonal from the center out. And now take some flame and pop that on the end to avoid any fraying. There are two options for the face. I've done both in the past. I definitely have a preference, but I did want to present both. Uh, option number one, button eyes. I can't quite find a good matching set in the right size for this bear. So I return to felt. Super easy, you can get it anywhere. Uh, I think you can tell I've even done it already a little bit, um, but I normally just cut uh, two dots for the eyes. I'll go in with a little bit of a white. Um, sometimes I'll use a gel pen, sometimes I'll do it with felt again. Um, of course it's not perfect. The ears aren't perfectly rounded. The, uh, the arms aren't perfectly seamed and all the ugly parts aren't hidden exactly, but I still think it turned out pretty cute and I'm actually quite pleased with the way that this one turned out compared to the last one that I completely hand crocheted with the big thread. Honestly, having these side by side and the color on this one, this one kind of looks like a koala. Um, if I made the nose a little bit bigger, I bet I could totally make that into a koala blush. Uh, and it's actually really cute. But um, you can see that these stitches are way bigger and they're a lot messier. You have much thicker holes or more opportunity for holes in the little ones. This is what the button eyes looked like, by the way. I liked the tiny ones on this guy, but um, there's they're two very different styles. And honestly, having them side by side, I can't really tell which one I like better because they both have pros and cons. But um, I do think that this is a much faster and easier way to make something that looks maybe a touch more professional, even if it's not perfect. Um, and definitely if you are a person like me who, one, doesn't know how to read <laughs> um, patterns, or two, I suppose you don't want <laughs> to have to learn how to read patterns, uh, I think that they both turned out pretty great for what they were. Um, that's really all I had to say. Uh, hopefully you guys liked this little tutorial slash kind of craft with me journey we went on together. Uh, if you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I do put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and I would love for you to be here for the next one. Thanks again so, so much, and I hope to see you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>